If I had known these 10 things before coming as an undergraduate student in the US, then I would have performed better in my studies and I would have had an even better profile. So in this video, I will be talking about those 10 unknown things. So let's get started. So the number one is taking some useless classes that you might think are useless, but are actually not. So those includes taking classes like American government, US history, world history, and also taking some arts and humanities classes like media and culture, music and culture, film history, and also maybe economics and also some core English classes where you will be supposed to write essays and read some novels. And these are the only classes that I actually struggled in. And for example, in my first semester when I took US history, that's the only class I actually got a B in. And in some cases I studied for these classes even more than my computer science classes. So I wish I had some notes or some guidance from my seniors. So this brings to the number two point that if I had some notes from my seniors and also some previous exams. So some previous exams can be provided by the professor. If you go to the website of a professor or if you ask the professor, in some cases, they actually provide you. And you can use those to practice more and more problems and then get a better grade. And if the old exams aren't provided by your professor, then you can maybe look into some different universities where you can see some similar problems so the goal is if you get more and more practice to the related questions then you will be able to get a better grade so now the number three is campus atlanta scholarship yes gsu gives scholarships to international students so that is known as campus atlanta scholarship and that can change your tuition fee from about thirteen thousand dollars to around twelve thousand dollars every semester and yes i got in state tuition that is i got the same scholarship as a merit-based scholarship after becoming a second year student but that's a separate thing but if i had known that this is a possibility in my first semester then i would have definitely applied earlier for this scholarship so the number four is becoming a research assistant in my first semester and actually in my first year and if i had known about that then i would have had an even better profile and i would have got even better internship yes i got an internship in my first year but if i had known about this position then i would have got internship into a maybe top company so that's actually worth doing in your first year you should definitely do a related job in your first year and those can be becoming a teaching assistant research assistant and i was actually a teaching assistant in my first semester and i was a math tutor because i had ap credits for my calculus one and two classes and i became math tutor right away from my first semester so now number five is taking more classes than you're actually supposed to. Yes, in my first semester, I only took four classes because I thought I am an average student and I would not be able to handle five classes, but that's actually wrong. I was able to handle even seven classes in my later semester. And because of that, I'm actually graduating in just three years and I will be getting a master's along with it so i will be graduating with a bachelor's and a master's in total four years so if i had known about that then maybe i would have graduated even a semester earlier and the reason behind that is i had some ap credits and i'm taking more classes than i'm supposed to so i wish i had done the same in my first year as well so now number six is life always gives you a second opportunity so if you did not take ap exams in your high school then you can take CLEP exams after you have arrived to a university so CLEP exams are very similar to AP exams and those give you an opportunity to skip those courses for example if you take CLEP exam in world history then you can skip that class in your college or university and you will not have to pay for that course at your university so you can maybe save like two to three thousand dollars that you will be paying for that class at your university so it's actually worth taking those clep exams just like ap exams and clep exams are cheaper than ap exams in the united states as compared to in india because i was paying a lot of money for ap exams per course back in india so now number seven is do not buy textbooks because in some cases professor never ask you to read your textbook or never ask you to do some problems from your textbook so instead they do is go to this source online and do those questions from that source so you should ask your professor before you actually buy a textbook or you should wait for your professor to give you some assignment from your textbook so if you're forced to buy a textbook, never buy it from the university bookstore because university bookstore is really expensive. And I did that mistake in my first semester as well. And I ended up spending $100 for a textbook that was available for rent on Amazon for just $30. So that's why I will say rent it on Amazon or buy an ebook online or check on Chegg. So check the prices on multiple sources and buy the cheapest textbook. Now, number eight is off-campus housing. Yes, many universities 
force you to stay on campus in your first year but many don't so similarly my university wasn't forcing me to stay on campus but i chose to stay on campus and that costed me a lot of money so i was paying around 800 dollars every month on on campus housing and now as i have moved to off campus housing and i am living in a living room so that's why i'm just paying 400 dollars per month so that's a lot of money that i'm saving and by living in off campus housing i do not have to move again because if you're living in on campus housing after the semester ends they ask you to just move out so that's why off-campus housing is more reliant because once you pay monthly you do not have to move again and again to a different housing and I will say get the cheapest possible off-campus housing that is closest to your apartment so that you do not have to move again and again and so that you can just walk to your apartment every day just like me so now number nine is plan ahead and make sure you know when you have your midterms finals and you can even ask your professor if you can take that final earlier so if you take that final earlier you can buy a ticket to your home country or you can go to a different state to relax on a vacation and by taking a final exam early and by going to a vacation earlier you will get the flight ticket at a cheaper rate because many students buy the flight ticket once they are done with their final exams so if you're taking your final exam earlier then you can go earlier and on those dates sometimes flight tickets are much cheaper and it's and that's especially the case in december so make sure you do that so now number 10 last but not the least the health insurance that the university provides is quite expensive and i got the health insurance from the university that was around 2500 per year in my first year but later on i moved to tokyo marine i cannot tell you if it's good or not because i haven't ever got the opportunity to use that health insurance but that was much cheaper for me and that's why i'm just spending like 500 to 600 dollar every year on health insurance so that has saved a lot of money as well so that's it for the 10 tips and i hope these 10 tips help you out in saving some money and becoming a better college student. So that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.